We're on to a new chapter. This is about counting problems and permutations. This is the fundamental counting principle, number 15.1a. A simple event is an event consisting of only one outcome, like flipping a coin. A compound event is an event that is made of two or more simple events. So if we flip a coin and roll a die, or if we flip a coin and then flip it again, that would be compound. And we can determine the number of ways a compound event may occur. So if we're going to flip a coin and roll a die, we're going to get either a heads or tails with the coin, and we're going to get 1 through 6 for the die, aren't we? So our possibilities will be a heads, and the die lands, so it's showing a 1. We could have a heads with a 2, and so on. We could have tails with 1 through 6. That means we have 6 and 6, 12 possible combinations. If you look, there's 2 here and 6 here, and 2 times 6 is 12. See? Now, I don't know if you remember from 7th grade math, but an experiment is an activity involving chance in which results are observed, and a trial is each observation of an experiment. An outcome is the result of a trial, like several coin flips. An event is a subset of all possible outcomes. All right. Now, if you've never learned any of this before, my advice is to click on the description to go to Grade 7 Math, Chapter 12, and watch those videos to understand. Okay. Many problems ask us to find the number of ways a set of objects can be arranged, combined, or chosen or the number of ways a series of events can occur. Combinatorics is the study of these types of problems. So here's the fundamental counting principle. This is the formal description. In a compound event in which the first event may occur in n sub 1 different ways, the second event may occur in n sub 2 different ways, and so on. And the kth event may occur in n sub k different ways. The total number of ways a compound event may occur is n sub 1 times n sub 2 times n sub 3, and so on. So for example, there were 2 times 6 equals 12 coin and die combinations here. We had 2 for the coin and 6 for the die. We could even say 6 times 2. It doesn't matter the order, does it? So Dave has 5 pairs of pants, 8 shirts, and 2 jackets. How many different outfit combinations? can he make? We do 5 times 8 times 2. 5 times 8 is 40, times 2 is 80. Isn't that easy? A locked door has a four-digit access code. How many different code combinations are possible? So here's the four different codes, and each one can be 0 through 9, which is 10 for each one. And there's 10 possible numbers for each digit of the code, we do 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10 to the fourth power, isn't it? That means there's 10,000 possible combinations for that four-digit access code. Okay. Now here we're going to be making lunch. This is going to be a compound event. Our first event, n sub 1, is going to be the bread. Is it going to be white or wheat bread? The second event is going to be n sub 2. Is that going to be, for the meat, beef or chicken? The third event is going to be the cheese. It's going to be cheddar, Swiss, or American. And the fourth event is going to be the side, french fries or potato chips. There's two here, there's two here, there's three here, and there's two here. Two times two is four, times three is 12, times two is 24. So there's 24 possible combinations. And we could do N sub 5 could be garnishes like lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, whatever you want to put on the sandwich. N sub 6 could be the types of beverage. Is it going to be water, soda, coffee, tea? And we can show the lunch possibilities with a tree diagram. So here are the choices of white or wheat bread. And depending on what the person chooses, it's going to go a different path, isn't it? If I choose white bread with beef meat, with cheddar, cheese, and fries, well, then I'll be going along here. But what if I chose beef with American cheese and chips? See? And if you count these, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. 24 possible combinations. See? 
Now, I don't know if any of you have ever played the game, the video game Life is Strange. It lets the player decide what Chloe will do next. That's the main character of the game. So depending on what she does is going to change what happens in the game for her decision, see? Or really for your decision. And if you've ever played the game Civilization, depending on what you do, will send you down a different path, won't it? Our next lesson is permutations. It's going to be 15.1b. And I hope that this made sense to you and you now understand the fundamental counting principle. It's fairly simple. We're just multiplying them, aren't we? So I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.